So you can go ahead and find a um, comfortable seated position. Hopefully, the light stays with me a little bit. I'm going to turn this on over here. It doesn't get too dark. And from your seated position, we'll just go ahead and start rolling the shoulders down and away. So we'll have a not very vigorous class, but certainly some movement, some standing sequences. And then go ahead and you roll your shoulders the other way. And of course, I have my dogs here. They won't, they won't leave me alone, which is fine. <laughs> and then drop one ear to one shoulder. Chin to chest, switch sides. Chin to chest, rock back and forth a few times. Leading with the nose. Trying to wake the shoulders and neck up. And then the next time the head rocks off to the right, go ahead and plant the right hand down, reach up through the left arm and pour off to the right. Pressing the ground away, lift up through that left side waist a little bit. And we'll press ourselves back to center, left hand down, right arm up, we're off towards the second side. Pressing the ground away, lift up to the side waist. And then we'll come back off to the right side. And this time we're going to curl in and open up. Curl in, little twist and open. So the sits bones are pressing down, lower half of the body anchored, and we're just twisting through the upper portion of the body. One more rotation. Back to center, switch sides. And you'll notice that as you're twisting, it's not that you're leading with that top shoulder. The top shoulder actually remains rather still and really trying to twist from the navel. Last rotation. And then we'll take the hands behind you, unlace the legs, and just windshield wiper the knees back and forth a couple of times. We'll let both knees come off to the right. Walk yourself up so that you're in this pinwheel position with the leg. And then we'll rock the hip back and forth. So I know that it's a little bit dark. I'm going to get be getting some shades here soon, so that should help a little bit. But pretty pleased that you can see most of the room, including, of course, my messy bookcase. And then go ahead and switch legs, switch sides, rock back and forth. And then we'll come back to center. We'll bring the soles of the feet together, holding onto the ankles and begin a little cat cow. Inhale and exhale, roll through the spine. Go for at least 10, if not a couple more. And we'll pause in the middle. We're gonna hug the right knee up into the chest. We're starting a little bit of a squat here before we move into deeper squats. Lift the chest towards the leg and then hug the knee in and we're gonna take a deep twist. 
press down into the right foot and reach up through the crown of the head. Go ahead and look forward and back a few times. And then we'll just switch sides, nice and simple. Hug the left knee in, lift and twist. Looking back and forth. And center. Just take the legs comfortably however you'd like. If you'd like soles of the feet together or knees apart, go ahead and do that. Or you can cross the legs. And we're going to interlace the fingers and just draw some figure eights in one direction. And then switch direction. And then from here, we're gonna keep those fingers interlaced, flip the palms over and press away. Inhale, reach the arms up so that the shoulders are coming up. And then exhale, come forward. So we're still protracting or pressing the shoulders away as you come forward. Inhale up and exhale, press. Two more. And then we're gonna flip the palms away so our fingers are pointed forward lift up and then we're just going to tick tock left and right hugging the arms into the ears and staying with the sensation of the spine being nice and tall so this is something that we'll use later and then from here we'll keep those fingers interlaced except we'll drop it behind the head inhale open the chest and exhale curl it Inhale, open, exhale, curl it. Getting into some functions of the spine. We'll be putting this together in just a moment. Just remember as you're peeling the elbows back, really have the sensation that you're getting open into the armpits. So the shoulder blades are squeezing together. After this next one, continue to roll forward and find your all fours. Once you have your all fours, we'll just make some circles with the hips in one direction. I found the really squeaky floorboard. Switch directions. Just nice big circles. Bring the inner thighs to touch. We're gonna to curl the toes under and press the hips back. Inhale, come forward, lift the chest into cow pose and exhale, press back. With the toes curled under, getting a little stretch to the soles of the feet. Three more. And then the next time you press yourself back, you're gonna walk your hands back. Slide the hands up to the hips, keep the tailbone tipped under. And we're gonna do that same sequence we did on our bottom, but here with the toes curled under. Interlace the fingers and press the arms away. Inhale the arms up and exhale down. Two of these, inhale up. Exhale down, flip the palms over, point to the finger, lift up, tick tock left and right, left and right. Interlace the fingers behind the head. Inhale, open, exhale, fold. Open and fold. Release the hands to the floor, flip the feet over, give the tops of the feet a little bit of a knock if you'd like. And then with the feet, turned over, walk yourself back. So this time you're seated on the heels with the toenails pressing into the mat. We're gonna move those functions of the spine together in a circle. We'll interlace the fingers and press out. 
So the pointer finger is extended. Inhale, reach the arms up. And then we're going to come off to the left, fold forward, and then make a big circle up to the right. If you get one to the right first, that's fine. Big circles. Drawing a big circle with your pointer finger. Squeeze those inner thighs together. So once you go, maybe one more rotation in this direction. Switch directions. Keeping the head between the arms. So you have to make your circle smaller, then make your circle smaller. Last one. And we'll release the hands to the floor, slide back out to your all fours. Take the knees a little bit wider than the hips. Big toes come to touch. And then reach the hips back so that we're in a child's pose that probably feels a little bit more familiar. Let the head drop down. And then crawl the fingertips off to one side. Okay, good stretch in the side waist. If you feel any pinching in the shoulder, then take the arms wider. And then walk yourself off to your second side. Back to center. And here we're gonna inhale, lift the chest, lift the sit bones into a wide kneed cow. And exhale, tuck the tailbone, send the hips off to the right. Inhale forward, exhale, send the hips off to the left. So we're rocking left and right and moving center through cow. Once more each side. And then from there, separate the feet. We're gonna curl the toes under. Take the knees underneath the hips. Step the right foot back and shift your weight back and forth. Next time your weight is shifted forward, lift the right leg up, bend the knees so the heel is towards the hip and draw big circles. Switch directions. Continue to press the floor away with the hands. And then we'll send the right foot forward. And just take a moment here to get into your low lunge. Maybe you want to heel toe the right foot a little bit wider. We'll slide the hands up. And then from here, this is pretty fun. I think we're going to get a little bit of heat going. And we're going to come forward and back like you're running down the trail. Bring your weight forward and back. Have a little twist in the torso. You can make that twist really dramatic or keep it kind of in the same place. Shifting our weight forward and back like we're running down the trail. Keep going. I said maybe getting a little bit more adventurous and twisting the torso. Getting a little bit more heat going by going a little bit more quickly. And then pause in the middle. And we'll slide that right knee back underneath the right hip. Flip both feet over. And just shift your weight left and right. Second side, toes are curled under. Step the left foot back, shift your weight back and forth. Get the good stretch along the back side of the left leg. And then we'll press into the floor to lift the left leg up, heel to the hip, big circle. Switch directions.
Now the left foot's gonna step forward. Again, maybe you wanna take the legs a little bit wider. You slide the hands up, back toe curled under. We're gonna do the same thing. Shift your right forward and back. You're running down the track. Drop the hips forward, come forward as far as feels like you can maintain stability. We'll keep going. And stop. Hands plant, left knee underneath the left hip, those feet flip over. This time we're gonna walk the knees back. Bring the inner thighs to touch and a little bit bigger circle. You come forward and back, head nice and heavy. Switch direction. We'll walk the hands back to the knees. And move to seated on the knees one more time. You can move the blanket out of the way if you've had a blanket. We're going to end up on the bellies here in a moment. Inhale, sweep the arms up. And exhale, bring the hands down and we'll slide forward to your all fours. Extend the right leg, we'll lift and step the right foot forward. And inhale, the arms above the head. Okay, from here, we're going to exhale a little different um, lunge series. We're going to exhale, lift the front heel, separate the arms, and squeeze the shoulder blades together. Inhale, tap the heel, reach the arms up. Exhale, squeeze. If you feel comfortable, you can start to let the head drop back. Two more. Last one. Heel taps. We'll bring the hands down, slide the right knee back underneath the hip. Curl your toes under, slide forward of your kneecap, and then hugging the upper arm bones towards the body, slowly release the chest to the floor. Once you get down, forehead down, you can make some shifts and adjustments in the low body. We'll take the hands wide, tent the fingertips, so rather than that tight chaturanga, a little bit wider. Inhale, lift the chest and exhale, peel down. Inhale, peel up and exhale down. Only five of these, only coming up so high that you feel like you're getting extension, but no Pinching in the back. After this last one, bring the hands back to either side of the side waist. Press yourself up to all fours. Reach the hips back for a little mini child's pose. Take a breath here. And then we'll push onto the shins. Inhale, sweep the arms back up. Exhale, slide forward to all fours. Step the left foot back, and then we'll step the left foot forward and through. Inhale up to your low lunge, and then as you exhale, we're lifting the left heel, squeeze the shoulder blades together, little back bend. Inhale up, exhale, squeeze. Going for about 10. Two more. After this last one, heel taps the floor, plant the hands, left knee underneath the left hip, curling the toes under, slide forward to the kneecap, slowly release the chest to the mat. Extend the legs, 
Bring the arms outside the plane of your mat. Inhale, left and exhale down. Two more. Hands to the side waist. Push yourself up and back to child's pose. We'll stay here for two breaths. We're going to add on here. So bringing the inner thighs to touch. This time we're going to inhale, push the hips up so you're standing on top of the knees. Raise the arms above the head. Exhaling, navel lifts as you slide forward to all fours. Lift the right leg and step the right foot forward. Listen to me here. You're going to curl the left toes under and press the heel to a high lunge. Take your time. Maybe the feet need to be a little bit wider. Put the knee over the ankle, pressing back into that left heel, and maybe slide the hands up the right leg, or inhale and bring the arms up. From here, now we're gonna tap that left knee back down five times, tap and extend. Tap, extend. Three, four, Last one this side, five, fold forward. From here, now you're stepping back to plank and we'll pause and plank for three breaths. Pushing up between, excuse me, between the shoulder blades. And then drop the knees down, drop the chest down, flip the feet over, take the hands wide, Inhale, lift yourself up, and exhale, come down. Toes curl under, press yourself back to your child's pose. Second side, flip the feet over. You can keep the arms extended in front of you for a little bit more core work. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, come down. Forward to all fours. Left foot steps forward, right toes curl under, and lift. Inhale up, high lunge. Again, different side of the body, so you may want to take the legs a little bit wider. Five taps with the back knee. Tap and press to extend. Two, three, four, last one, five. We'll come forward. This time we're stepping to plank. Three breaths in plank. Pushing the ground away, reaching through the tailbone. Active through the legs. Drop the knees, drop the chest, flip the feet over, arms wide. Inhale, lift. Exhale, come down. Press yourself back to child's pose. We'll look forward and separate the legs about hip width distance apart. Keep reaching the sits bones back. Grip with the fingertips and then lift the hips up, engaging in the thighs, moving to downward facing dog. So you should have that same sensation that the arms are hugging the ears, just like when we had the arms above the head and the hands to touch. And you can sway or pedal the feet. One more breath. Deeply bend the right knee, sending the left heel to the floor, and raise the right leg up and behind you. Looking at the space between the hands, bend the right knee and step the foot to the inside or just behind the right hand. Squeeze those inner thighs towards one another, and we'll inhale up, high lunge. 
From here, we're gonna drop that left heel down at a 45 degree angle for a warrior one. That left hip point should be still be tracking forward. So again, make any adjustments that you need to. Let's take the hands to the waist for a moment. Tuck the tailbone back and forth. Maybe move in a little bit of a circle here. And then back to your warrior one. From warrior one, we're gonna inhale and squeeze the thighs together so the front leg is straight. And exhale, deep bend. Inhale, squeeze, exhale, sink deeper. Three, four, and five. Deep bend in the front knee. And then we're gonna take the hands to the heart center and twist the chest open to the left for warrior two. Keep squeezing those inner thighs towards one another. Inhale, open the arms. Look forward and back a couple of times. Maybe nod the head. And keep reaching out through those fingertips. So lots of energy if you feel like the arms are just kind of laying there or if your shoulders are hurting, you can always take the hands to the shoulders or flip the palms back and forth. And we'll hold this for another three breaths. Back, your backside, the tailbone is tucked. And then reach forward, plant the right hand, bring the left hand down to meet it. Turn to the big toe ball mound of the back foot. We're gonna press the floor away with the hands to step to plank. Adjust the arms, and we'll stay here for three breaths. Drop down onto the knees, release the chest to the floor, keep the hands where they are this time, clip the feet over, and inhale, lift to your back bend. So it could be nice and low, or if you want it to be higher, go right ahead. Feeling like you're pulling the chest through the arms. And then we'll curl the toes under, press yourself up, hips back towards the heels, and then lift again, downward facing dog. Take your time, let the head be heavy, pedal the heels or twist. Second side, deeply bend the left knee, sinking the right heel closer to the mat. Kick the left leg up. Look at the space between the thumbs as you step the left foot forward. And inhale, lifting to high lunge. We're gonna drop the right heel down 45 degrees, then make any adjustments so you can have the idea that there's a string attached between the inside of the left knee and the right hip that's drawing the hip around. Next, inhale, squeeze the inner thighs together to straighten the front leg, and exhale, deep bend. Inhale, squeeze. Exhale, bend. Pushing on the knife edge of the back foot to drive the front knee further forward. Last one, and we'll stay with that deep bend in the front knee. Take the hands to heart center, and this is, now that you can see my back, I'm gonna tuck my tailbone. I mean, could I even take your hand to the low back to feel it. Tuck your tailbone as you turn to the right. Open the arms up, roll through the wrists, maybe look left and right. Keep pressing into that back knife edge so that when the front leg wants to start to relax, you're still pressing the knee forward, driving that knee forward. Another two breaths. And then we'll bring the left hand down, followed by the right, turn to the big toe bone out of the back foot. Push the ground away as you step the left foot to meet the right. Plank for three breaths. Okay. 
drop down onto the knees, release the chest to the floor, flip the feet over, and inhale, lift to your back bend. This time we're gonna press the hip up and back, but take the knees wide and drop the hips back down into your child's pose. Rocking back and forth on the forehead, wiggling the tailbone. Another two long deep breaths. Walk the hands back to the knees, bring the knees together. We'll pause here for a moment, just reaching through the crown of the head, drop the tailbone, you can take the hands to heart center, and take a moment to capture the breath and notice how deep you're breathing, if you're breathing more through one nostril than the other, if you're finding that you started to clench the jaw or the tongue or the face or the neck, make any motions that you need to. So we're sort of pressing the restart button right in the middle here. We'll plant the hands, curl the toes under, and start to walk the hands back as you lift the knees into a squat at the back of your mat. Keep hugging the inner arches of the feet together. And I'll inhale, lift the chest, and then on your next exhale, and if you're up a little bit higher, that's okay. And if you have blocks that you wanted to use, um, go ahead and get them. We're just gonna do this two or three times. We're gonna press the heels to the mat and lift the hips, finding a forward fold at the back of the mat. Keep pushing the floor away with the feet and lifting up through the tailbone. Head nice and heavy. And we'll deeply bend the knees until the heels peel up and then drop the hips down. Another inhale and exhale, squeezing the inner arches of the feet, inner thighs together. Again, send the heels towards the floor, and then once they hit, lift the hips forward, fold back your mat. Feeling the lengthening along the back side of the legs. See how heavy you can get in the torso to continue to feel that lengthening all the way up and over the sit bone. Okay, look forward, drop the hips back down, inhale, and last time we'll exhale, forward fold. Take the hands to the legs, slide the hands up the legs as you roll to stand at the back of the mat. And then once you're up, we're going to inhale, sweep the arms up, and then with those fingers interlaced, extend the pointer finger, come up and off to one side. It doesn't matter which side, you're gonna look down, see that the shoulder, the hip, and the heel are in one line. And then maybe start to peel the nose up and look underneath the opposite armpit. Listen here, we're gonna soften through the knees and come forward into a forward dive. Like you're diving forward as if the mat was like a pool. Maybe start to straighten the legs. Use the core to inhale back up, standing up and off to your second side. Using those tools, finding alignment in the body. And we'll soften the knees, lift the torso as you roll forward like you're diving into the mat. 
press and inhale the arms up. Listen here, we're gonna exhale and totally forward fold. Slide the hands up the fronts of the legs. Maybe thumbs capture the hip crease to press back, flat back. On your next exhale, start to crawl out to downward facing dog. Deep bend in the right knee as you raise the right leg up. Step the right foot forward, immediately dropping that left heel down. So we're gonna lift up into warrior one, big inhale. Exhale, tuck the tailbone, open up warrior two. Squeeze those inner thighs together. Reach forward, and this time we're gonna drop the forearm onto the right thigh. Make a big spiral with the left arm, creating your side angle pose. Keep that pressure of the back foot to drive the front knee forward. And then we're gonna take this top arm and bring it underneath the rib carrot rib cage and peel the ribs open so we get a little bit deeper twist. Bring that left arm back above the head. And maybe start to look forward as we pause here for three breaths. Okay, here comes a little bit of core work. I'm gonna reach that bottom arm out, parallel the arms, and then inhale, lift yourself up. Okay, do that again. Arms parallel, we're gonna tip forward and inhale up. Keep the legs stable, just moving the upper portion of the body. Last one. Inhale up and drop the hands to the hips. And we'll move back to warrior one. Squeeze the inner thighs together so the legs are straight and then fold into a halfway forward fold. Naturally, the hips are gonna to wanna to kinda of get loose here. Keep squeezing the inner thighs together so that you're peeling, and you have a hem to the hip, you're peeling that right hip back, and then guiding the left hip forward. If that feels okay, you can drop the hands to the floor and let the head hang for a moment. And maybe actively rolling the left inner thigh up and back. From here, deeply bend the front knee. We'll place the hands on the floor, step back to your plank pose. Three breaths. Option, drop the knees to the floor. We're one long line, release the chest, flip the feet over, draw the chest forward and up, and then curl the toes under, and we'll press back to our downward facing dog. Maybe a deep inhale and exhale through the mouth. And then we're gonna Walk the hands back to the feet. And inhale, sweep the arms above the head. And exhale, hands again up on either side of the side waist. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Create your halfway lift, inhale. And exhale, travel forward to downward facing dog walking the arms out. Gripping with the fingertips, deep bend in the left knee as you raise the left leg up. Step the left foot forward and through, right heel drops down, and again we'll inhale come up to that warrior on the second side. Opening up, Warrior two, come forward, drop the elbow down, open the chest. Take the hand to the rib cage and peel it open. 
and then reach the arm back above the head. Three breaths here. Maybe starting to gaze up and forward. Core work. Left arm comes out, parallel the arm. Inhale, lift the torso. Exhale. Reach. Inhale, up. Three. Four. Last one. And we'll take the hands to the hips, square the shoulders, and lift the chest, coming back to that warrior form. Squeeze the inner thighs together, hands are on the hips, and fold forward. Continue to reach out through the crown of the head, actively drawing the left hip up and back, and the right hip forward. Maybe drop the hands down. Maybe let the head hang. Rolling the inner right thigh up and back. Be aware if you're someone that tends to grip with the toes, try and keep the base of the foot in contact with the floor so that the toes could even lift all the way up. One more breath here. And we'll deep bend through the front knee, plant the hands, travel back to plank. Pause for three breaths. Drop the knees down if you'd like. Release the chest to the floor. Create your back bend, big inhale, and then exhale, downward facing dog. Walking the hands to the feet, forward fold back of your mat. Press the floor away as you inhale, sweep the arms all the way up. And exhale, this time we'll take the hands to heart center, just like we had that pause earlier. Go ahead and close the eyes. Noticing the heart rate, any place that feels like it's got a little bit more energy to get out. And then we'll bring the hands to either side of the side weights. And go ahead and sit back into your chair pose. You can sweep the fingers along the hips as you reach the hips back. Big inhale here. And then exhale, come forward to your forward fold. We'll crawl out to downward facing dog. Raise the right leg and step the right foot forward. Listen here, we're gonna bend the left knee and slide the knee forward so that you're seated on top of the heel in a little squat. Um, just turn so you can see so that your heel is underneath the hip. If that's not quite right for you and you have a blanket, Maybe sit on the blanket, or if the knee needs a little bit more support. And we'll twist, just like we hugged the knee into the chest earlier. Twist to the right. Take a little twist to the left. Back to center. Again, if you have blocks and you'd like to use them, Maybe place one block in front of you. We're gonna press into the floor with the hand and kick that left leg up and back so that you're in a half split. You just stay here in our half split, allowing the upper body to hang, keep lifting up to the inner thigh of the left leg. Go ahead and deep bend in the front knee and that right knee. Drop back down to your squat. Inhale, lift the chest. We'll plant the hands and slide back to plank pose. 
Soften the knees, lift the hips, downward facing dog. Second side, raise the left leg. Step the left foot forward. Draw the right knee down and forward, creating your squat. Inhale, lift the chest. Twist one way, twist the other way. Plant the hands or use your block. Press into the floor to kick that right leg up and back. Keep raising up as much as you can the right leg using the upper body like it's a pendulum weight. And we'll soften, drop back down to the floor. Plant the hands, step back to plank, and lift the hips downward facing dog. This time we're gonna step the right foot forward, but then we're gonna drop the left knee back down so you're back in your lunge, heel toe, the right foot off to the side. Walk the hands forward, and arrive in the pinwheel pose that we had all the way at the top of last when we were moving through the hips. So this is just another version or um, type of hip opener like your pigeon pose. But we'll bring the hands forward in front of the right shin. And then from here, if this feels good for your hips, then stay here. And of course, if you prefer to just turn the leg and move to pigeon, that's fine as well. We're gonna start to crawl the hands around for a little bit of a twist. And really make this whatever works best for your hip. So if you were fine forward, if you liked the pigeon, go ahead. And we'll stay here for about another five breaths. You might even wanna move a little bit or deepen the twist. I'll walk the hands up. Listen here, rather than going all the way back through, we're just gonna roll the hips and open to a wide-legged stance, seated stance. Moving the flesh away from your sits bones, so that the toes and the knees face the ceiling and begin to crawl forward. Another great place to use a block, maybe for the forehead or underneath the forearms. Again, we'll stay for five breaths. One more inhale and exhale. Walk the hands back around. Draw the left knee in, then the right leg. You're gonna move back through a quick little pigeon as you step back to downward facing dog. Second side, left foot steps forward, right knee taps the floor, heel toe, the left foot across the mat and drop the hips down, bending the right knee. Walk the hands forward, maybe a little twist. Find where you'd like to be for the next five breaths. We'll start to bring the hands back again, wide legs. So you might be facing away from me and where you were before, and that's fine. The legs are wide, forward fold. Only coming forward enough that you're feeling a little bit of stretch in the inner thighs. We're not trying to get through a sensation to something else. 
Just stick with what you got for right now. Walk the hands back, unwind yourself the way that you came in. We'll take one last downward facing dog. Let the head be nice and heavy. And then drop the knees down, walk the knees forward, and roll all the way onto your back. Once you come down, go ahead and wiggle around. We're going to take a twist. So maybe both knees up, or maybe you just want one knee up as you twist off to one side. And unwind to center and twist off to your second side. Back to center. We'll hug both knees into the chest. And if you like, you could take the hands underneath the low back as you reach the soles of the feet up. Let me pause here. Toes drawing back towards the shins. Upper body anchored to the floor. And when you feel ready, very slowly releasing those legs. And once the heels touch the floor, scoot the hands out of the way, closing the eyes. Feel free to take the hands onto the belly if you'd like to. Finding the cadence of breath, the beat of the heart, the eyes closed, and just let yourself settle into these sensations. Allow yourself to enjoy this moment of rest. Taking a moment to reflect on the practice. Noticing times when you felt that you were struggling a little bit, something didn't quite feel right. And then see if you can find a time when you felt like things were really flowing for you. Just become aware of what motions in the body feel enjoyable. whether it's twists or stands or forward folds, just become aware of that. Maybe something that you're noticing your body would like a little bit more of. And we'll stay here for another five breaths. And you can go ahead and count back from five if you'd like.
then once you get down to one, go ahead and wiggle the fingers and the toes, maybe shuffle the hips or sway the knees until you roll off to one side. And we'll meet where we began, seated on the floor. Once you're up, make any motions that you need to in the shoulders, nodding the head. And then we'll take the hands to heart center. A big inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth. <sighs> Thanking yourself for coming to a practice. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks, Kate. Yes, absolutely. Thank you.